Matrix Resurrections. I saw this yesterday uh, for a special viewing. It was unexpected. <clears throat> and I wanted to give myself a little time to reflect. Now, I seen some people uh, after I got done watching it. I saw what some people were reviewing. Some people who I follow that usually have pretty decent opinions and stuff overall. Not that I always agree with them. I usually feel they're very well thought out. I feel like they fell a little short on this one. And what I mean is... <clears throat> there was things in this movie that was reiterating for a reason. Now, I'm going to try to keep this to things that you may have seen in the trailer or maybe an interview. I'm not going to do any spoilers that you may not have already seen between a couple or a few trailers and uh, a couple of interviews. So, <clears throat> for one, I am going to say this because there is people who were... Very worried that Jessica uh, Henwick's, I think her name is Henwick, uh, character, uh, she was on Game of Thrones. She was the female um, love interest of Iron Fist from the Netflix show. Technically, she was also a protagonist. Uh, really liked her character in there uh, as uh, Miss Wing. She is important in this movie, but it is not the woke show. Now... That is not to say there is no woke <laughs> in this whatsoever, but particularly it actually fits because it builds on a character. It gives this character a little bit more personality for being basically a little misogynist. <laughs> but it actually worked because of how it, it was all put together. Now, with this... Um, I, I did get into it after I left the theater with a guy because he, you'll see something in there, but you have to think. Now he thought that there was this other thing and he literally was out there like, this is woke. And I was like, that's actually not true, dude. Um, it actually makes total sense. So I had to actually go back. Well, explain to him from the beginning, like, do you remember this happening with Neo? Okay. How did this happen? How did this particular situation happen in the first film? And once I got him to think about it, saying, hey, when this happened in each movie, how did this go? With the these characters, how did, how did Morpheus do this? How did it, like that? All of a sudden, he was like, oh, I kind of see your point. Okay, I, I jumped the gun. So my, my suggestion to you is that when you're watching this, so, there are things that are going to happen that's going to make you sit back and go, wait a minute. But you have to take the moment to think about it. Because it actually emphasizes the importance of the characters. There's also a very good explanation as to, because like I said, the second trail already revealed this. So if you don't want to hear it, you know, stop here, see it, then come back. Agent Smith is now this other dude. Now, from what I'm hearing, uh, the Wachowski did not want Hugo Weaving to come back for this particular movie or, like, interrupted negotiations. I have a feeling part of the reason why is because maybe they want to uh, use them later or use him later. There is... I th It was very cool because um, I actually predicted to my friend that that got, that guy who was like, Back to the Matrix, <laughs> I predicted that that was Smith. The thing is, is that Smith is in a different situation. They actually do go in very good explanation to why Smith looks the way Smith does. And I think it's funny because uh, I know like one or a uh, couple YouTubers were doing this thing of, as soon as you said it was Smith, I kept comparing him to Hugo Weaving. No. <laughs> Why would you do that? The thing is, is that he's in another body. Now, I know part of the reason why 
or I, like like I said, you know, that face and stuff. I know part of the reason why some people are saying it is because that other dude that took over Smith, like when Smith took over in the uh, second or third film, sounded and had a lot of the mannerisms. Well, this is a little different because of where what they're dealing with with the Matrix. So it's people aren't exactly who they were. So, but you can still get the core of them. But there is some inflections and differences because of just how things worked out. However, with Morpheus, for example, there is a clear and present explanation to why Morpheus is looks the way Morpheus does, seems to be the way Morpheus does. Also, too, I found it kind of interesting because particular, a couple of particular YouTubers, uh, I'm not going to name names, that also said... Oh, this dude captured Lawrence Fishburne in segments. They do actually explain in the movie why he looks that way. Why he's also a little bit different. And is not he's not exactly Lawrence Fishburne's Morpheus. He is, but he's not. And if you pay attention, he does explain, even to himself, he explains, hey, this is why I'm this way. Like, he does a little bit of... Uh, Hey, I'm I'm this thing, and he kind of goes back and forth about it. But you actually see a little bit of a difference in the personality. It kind of goes back and forth, but if you pay attention, they do say why. So these things are good. Um, there is a lot of meta, a ton of meta <laughs> uh, about what the Matrix is. Uh, basically, like I said, I, I seen this in an interview thing. But if you don't want the spoilers, I'm sorry. You're getting it a little bit. So one of the meta things that they did was Matrix was a video game. And they kept doing the meta thing. And they pushed it just a smidge too much. A smidge. Not enough to ruin the movie. Not enough to do something. But a point of it was like, eh, all right, you, you, you don't need to lay it on any thicker. You're, you already put on the freaking, you know, meat, the mustard, the mayo, the ketchup, the onions, the whole, the tomato, the lettuce, leave the chicken there. You are, you already got the salami. Like it, it was like they kept layering and it was like, see, don't you remember? Da, 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 da. And of course they're going to play up the nostalgia because there are people who've never even seen the matrix or haven't watched the matrix since like 2005. So it, they needed to touch back. That is 100% understandable. 100% makes sense. 100% needed. However, it got to a point where, where they started watching um, things, and it was like, yeah. Now, once again, a particular YouTuber or a couple of YouTubers were like, hey, because I, I noticed people were getting confused by this. They were like, why? How did they get this thing where, because there was actual things, like you would literally see something playing on a screen that was about the previous Matrixes or something like that. They actually explain it. So my suggestion, once again, is pay attention. Pay very close attention. Because they actually explain how they were able to see certain stuff and things actually quite in the beginning of the movie. And in the beginning of the movie as well, there was a lot of shot for shot. But then it kind of leads from one thing to another of why they're witnessing this. Why it's going from shot to shot. So I'm personally saying... You notice I keep repeating myself. Pay attention because uh, they didn't. The questions that they had that they leave you with are for the next film if they make another film. But the questions you have about why is this thing this way, they actually explain it. You just have to pay attention. Now, like I said, the meta got a little far to the point where when I was in the theater, some people were laughing, and I did notice that this one. <clears throat> They kind of, they put a little bit of more humor into it. Not too much. Not even a whole, whole lot. But it was like a little bit of humor in it. A, 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 a little bit. And it was a nice change of pace. It made the film feel a little different. I personally thought it was cool. I was like, you know what? I like that they have this little bit of humor. It, it actually, it, it, it fed the story a little better to me. By having that little bit of humor. Uh, I'm trying to think. I like the new technology. The action was very well done. Um, 
it was very interesting where when they finally, when they stopped going to the past, they finally got to the point of this is kind of where the world is. Now, I figured out a couple characters while I was watching, which was awesome. I actually was very happy about that. There is an explanation to where, why Neo, why Trinity, these people are there. Like, what are they doing? Why are they there? There is an explanation to that. Uh, there's also some harkbacks to characters because, you know, it time has passed. Like they said, it, it's been a while since they've done a Matrix. They And I mean, they, they, they did so much hardcore meta humor. They even did this thing <laughs> about the company who's running the thing. Like, you know, the overhead company. We'll make it with, like, we'll do this without you kind of thing. And it was like, okay, we, we get it. Like, by this point, it was like, oh, oh, okay, I, I, I get it. You're evil overlord. You know, you, you, your big company is telling you, all right, time to get away from the meta a little bit, guys. Time to move on. And there was, and what I also mean by a little bit of smidge, there are some scenes that were like shot for shot and it was kind of annoying because by this point they've laid it on so hard, like literally fight scenes uh, sometimes, not the whole thing, but there was like fight sequences that were direct from the first, and it's like, why, you didn't need to do that. You already established so much, you didn't need to do this thing here or like punch through the, the the pillar like you did in the first film like you, it, it wasn't needed so like I said they pushed a little smidge too hard does it ruin the film but after a while you start to get like okay guys like it, it's enough's enough there was nothing mega groundbreaking but it was very interesting and very fun the new way they travel uh because you know you used to use the the, the pay phones and now in the world of today, we don't have pay phones. And I was curious, how are they going to travel? The funny thing is they kind of did something before with it a little bit. Um, I thought it was great. I thought it was 100% great. Uh, I really like how they travel. I was like, that's an ingenious idea. Um, definitely to, to, to play this up. Like, awesome. And this is a great way to fix it going forward because... These are kind of everywhere, but you have to work with it. And when you see it, you'll be like, okay, that's a great way to get around this and keep go going. Because since they had cell phones in the other one, you you could talk to the operator, but you can't use it to jump. So they actually found another way. They didn't go deep into it on how exactly it works, but it worked enough that you could kind of piece it together like, okay... All right, this is how they did because of how the Matrix is set up now. This is what you, they would utilize. So that was really cool. This movie off, also emphasizes why Neo is important, why you know Trinity is important, why Morpheus is important, what they did, how they did stuff. I really like the status quo, and I would like to see where they go with that, with um, where the machines are at and where everything. And they give you a little explanation to what was going on. Um, after, you know, after the situation with Neo and Trinity and what their importance is. And it's funny because it makes sense. If you put thought behind it, it actually makes sense to where it landed and why. Be but you have to really think about it. Once you, when you put the thought together, where they, where you see what happens later to these characters, think about every situation and every decision that was made by the characters and, and what was involved with said decision. When you see that and you really think about it, it'll be like, well, wait a minute. Yeah, because there was stuff that was there. So... Uh, the chemistry was still there between uh, Neo and Trinity as well. I thought it was really cool. There was some foreshadowing that was funny. Uh, when you see the status, like what the Matrix is currently, what the the stuff is, it's like, oh, 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 oh okay. And, you know, the design and how they did stuff. What happened to the programs? What happened... You know, because remember, the programs were something separate, too. And they had those rogue programs like the Ghost Twins. 
it also turns into a thing of, well, what happened to these rogue programs? They give you a little taste of that too. So there's a lot that goes on. They give you up to date. You, you see how much time passed, what has happened since those time has passed. I personally think the movie's good. Now, I am one of the people who I have, I've played, I still have it, Enter the Matrix. Um, I can't find the memory card with the thing. But I played Enter the Matrix so I could get Niobe's story, right? I'm the person who actually played Matrix Online, which I'm now thinking that with everything going on, it could be canon. It still feel like it might be. Like Morpheus's fate, for example. So it might be. Um, because of how things pan out, it, it could be still, so I'm going to say, yeah, um, I didn't like beat the whole thing, but I, I played enough and I know all the story that was there. It's like something that you, they don't have to go deep in and you can get the same result basically to get the same answer, but it was fun to explore it. Um, back when I used to play video games more, I still love to play them now, but I just don't have all the time. Uh, also... You know, I have the Animatrix. I have all three Matrix movies. I actually like all three Matrix movies. And it was cool because Enter the Matrix with Niobe, like, you get a different ending um, in that particular one, in that game. But I like the the uh, setup and stuff like that. I actually, my favorite is actually Matrix Reloaded. I know most people are like, Matrix 1 is the best thing ever and the rest of them suck. I'm like, not me. And Resurrections was actually pretty good. Like, people, like, sometimes hate on it. Was it as good as the first movie or the second movie? No, but it doesn't always have to be. Was it enjoyable? Was it watchable? Was it interesting? Yes. Uh, I like Matrix Reloaded a lot, actually. That's just the one I like. That's my favorite one. So, I yeah, and yes, I do think it's better than the first movie. Get over it. It, it is. It's better than the first movie. But the first movie's amazing. So I like all of them. Now, for most people, I will say this. At the end of the day, this one, if you really love the first one, this one probably is not better than the first one to you. It was, it was a little bit of rehashing and stuff. However, I think it was better than the third one. Um, I think it was, you know, if you're a person that's like, I love the first one, it's probably better than the sequels to you. That's my opinion. Now, me personally, I think it fits right along. I do think it's better than the third one, but that's not like an insult. That's just an improvement on something I already think is good. So it's like, okay, this is good, but this is better kind of thing. So it's like, hey, ice cream is good, you know, vanilla ice cream, but you put a little chocolate sauce on it, now it's a little better kind of thing. So my rating for this is I, uh, is a should buy. I, I very much enjoyed it. I am very intrigued on what happens next, and I want to see more. I, I like where it ended, and I legit... Would like to see at least two more movies from this. If they want to do more, I am down. I don't care if they do 10 movies for this. Um, but at least if I can get about maybe two more movies out of this, I would be very happy. Basically, if this is another trilogy. That way we have a six-part trilogy over the course of a 20-year thing with a side story. So I count Animatrix as a prequel. So technically, it's a it would be a seven-story thing. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Number seven. Holy number. Just saying. So, anyway, this is the Geek Protagonist. Tell me if you watched it. What do you think? You stay safe, you stay healthy, you stay real. Uh, like I said, it's a shit buy for me. See ya.